Hi guys, I'm here today to talk to you about how you feed your dog. Many people scoop out dry dog food, put it in a bowl, give it to their dog, and then proceed to go on their day. It takes about two minutes and they check it off their list, chick, feed the dog, done. And that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Yes, I do want you to feed your dog, but I'm here to tell you that there is a better way to feed your dog. And that better way is through a mentally enriching food toy. So I have a collection today of the toys that you're really going to um, want to add to your collection. So before we get started showing you the individual toys, I'm going to show you what we're, what we're getting started with. I have a variety of treats and kibbles here that I'm going to use to stuff these toys. I'm going to show you the kinds of toys and why I like them. This is alligator jerky. And if we had smell-o-vision, you would understand why this is in my collection. It's a very, very stinky treat. So for a lot of toys, um, for a lot of dogs, it keeps them um, engaged in the toy because it's very stinky. This is some freeze-dried treats. Uh, this is lamb, which dogs find irresistible. Again, it's on the high end, a high-value treat. And I use that to keep them engaged in the toy. This is some regular Zooks, small, easy to use, right? There we go. Small, easy to use treats. They, they come out of the treats very, out of the toys easily, so I always have some of these in there. Some dog food that is not my regular dog's dog food, so it's a different flavor for them. This is some real meat treats, jerky treats. Zooks Little Links, again, these are very stinky, so I like to use these for the dogs. Some turkey bits, freeze-dried liver, more freeze-dried liver. These are little bitty moist treats. They're called Cochis, and they're like a one calorie treat. Again, very small, so they uh, fall out easily freeze-dried liver, some itty bitty buddy uh, biscuits. My guys don't really like this flavor of them, so I use food toys as a way to get rid of um, treats that they don't really like very much. These are um, freeze-dried beef testicles. Yep, testicles. Uh, again, these are high value. They don't get them very often, so when they smell them in their treats, they're pretty excited about them. Some, just their regular dry dog food kibble. Crunchy dry treats, big treats. I have a big um, gingerbread man and big biscuits. I use these to take up space in some of the food toys so that if I'm filling a toy with a lot of small treats, it takes a lot of treats. If I'm filling it with a bunch of big treats, it doesn't take as many treats, so I can fill it quicker. And cream cheese as uh, my topper. So now that we have all of our ingredients together, let's look at some of the toys. First on the list is a Kong. Small, medium, large, extra large, uh, senior or puppy, it's a softer rubber. One of my all-time favorites that I is a, a standard go-to in my house. This is a Kong holder. Um, my husband actually makes them. He's a, he's a great woodworker for me. I had him make this for me so that I could put um, six Kongs together and what I do is I stuff them all and either put them in the refrigerator for later on during the week or um, I will often hide them all in the house for my dogs. I have three dogs so if I hide six that pretty much most all of them get two Kongs each. So how do I stuff a regular Kong? I will find something yummy, put that in the bottom, some dry dog food, Some other dry treats in there, maybe a soft treat.
top with cream cheese, done. This is an easy Kong. If I wanted to make it harder, I would take the dry dog food, put it in a bowl and add water and let it sit for a while. It's gonna swell up and look like soft food. And I'm gonna use that to cram in there with a few treats, think parfait. That way the dog has to lick it out. When it's stuffed like this, they're gonna lick the cream cheese, turn it over, shake it, drop it, the treats will fall out, they'll be able to get it. So it's entertaining. However, it's not as long lasting as it would be if it was a treat that they had to lick out. This is an old marrow bone. You can see they've already gotten all the marrow out of it. I'm gonna use this the same way. I'm gonna put cream cheese on the end, some treats in the middle, cream cheese on the other end, put it in the refrigerator. They've gotta lick the cream cheese out. Again, I can use a soft food, stuff it in there, freeze it. And again, I now have a, a heavy duty hard Kong equivalent. The topple by West Paw. It comes in a small and a large. There's a hole in both of them. And the way that I like to stuff a topple, I will take some kind of gooiness. Uh, I don't know if you can see that really well. And I smear it in the bottom, right along the sides in there. Something yummy. So I have some very stinky, yummy stuff in there. Some high value liver, some jerkies, a couple pieces of the other liver, some soft zooks. The little bitty treats because they're going to fall out of the hole easy for them. Some dry dog food. Then I take the, the other portion, cram some cream cheese in there. Then I take both parts Make sure the holes are on opposite sides. You don't have to, but I like to make sure the holes are on opposite sides. Put them together. Like, like that. Now I have a two-stage toy. Fall. They'll knock it over, the treats will fall out. Then when the easy treats are done, they have to learn to pull this apart to get to the cream cheese and the gooey stuff that's in this top part. To me, it reminds me of a two-stage uh, Kong, right? So they're gonna get the first easy stuff out and then they're gonna have to work at it a little bit harder to get it apart to get to the gooey center goodness of the Kong, or of the topple of the toy. So it's, it's like a Kong, because it's got that rubber that they can chew. It's quiet like a Kong but it's harder than a Kong because once they get one portion done, they have to pull it apart to get to the second stage of it. This is my new favorite, favorite toy and my dogs love it as well. This is a Kong wobbler. You unscrew the top, kibbles, some dry food. I might throw a few treats in there, but I generally just put mostly their food screw the lid back on. They have to knock it over to get treats to fall out. What I like about this one is that it's got a heavy weighted base. Think of a weeble wobble when you were a kid. So yes, they can try to carry it around, but if you get the right size for your dog, it's usually too heavy for them to lift and carry off with their mouth. So it's more of a stationary toy. This is the Kong Wobbler. This 
is the Kibble Nibble. By far one of the go-to toys in my house. We use this a lot. You can tell this guy's pretty beat up. Um, we've had this for many, many years and my dogs really love it. What I like is that it's adjustable on the inside. I can, using scissors, I can cut the tines and make it a little bit easier for the dog to get the kibbles out. And if my kibbles are a very big kibble, um, then I can adjust it that way as well. What I like about this is that it holds a nice quantity. I can actually feed an entire meal in this, in this ball. If my dog is a little nervous about eating out of the, the, the ball the first time, I can open it up and let the dog learn to eat this way. It's kind of like a, a bowl for them. And then I'm going to put it together. Then as my dog rolls the, ball, the, the egg around, it's kind of more of an egg shape than a ball, the kibbles fall out and they can eat the kibbles. Right? This is one of the... Uh, intermediate levels. It's not the easiest toy out there. I'm going to show you some that are very, very easy, but this is a good beginner toy for many dogs. This is the Magic Mushroom. Again, this is one of my other favorite toys, or rather one of my dog's favorite toys. The difference between this and the egg is that the kibble goes in this portion of it, you put the bottom back on. The dog has to tip the toy over and now there's kibbles in the lid and then the dog has to tip the toy over again for the kibbles to fall out. So this is one step harder than the egg, harder than the wobbler, but easier than the topple. This is one of my dog's favorite toys. Now I will tell you one of the drawbacks of this toy is that it can be loud on hardwoods, especially if you have a dog like mine who when he learned how to use a Kong would drop the Kong and have the treats fall out. He thinks that's how you get toys to fall out of all of your stuff and so he will pick this up and drop it. So it can be fairly loud in homes that have only hardwoods. So take that into consideration. This is uh, called the Snoop, funny name for a great toy. So when you open it up, it's going to look like this. And then you can put some kibbles in there, some other treats. I generally stick with treats that are fairly small for this toy, and you'll see why here in a second. So I've got my treats in there, push on this, and now you can see that it's in the center And so they kind of, the, the treats fall along this ring and they have to roll them out. And then as they roll out, sometimes stuff comes out very easily, but sometimes it doesn't depending on how you have stuffed it and how much of it has rolled up into this lip portion of it. What I do like about this is it's fairly soft. Stanley likes to carry it around this way and he will sit and play with this even when it's empty. Again, it's very soft, so if I have an aggressive chewer, this is not a good choice for them, but this is the Snoop. When they get very good at this, there is a ball that you can buy that wedges in here so that it makes it a two-stage toy as well. They have to pull out the ball to then get to the Snoop. So this is one of my um, new favorites as well. This is the Pickle. This is not a meal toy. This is more of a snack toy because it doesn't hold very much. Now my dogs are not heavy duty aggressive chewers. We do have some friend dogs that come over that are pretty aggressive chewers and they have done some damage to the toy. Um, 
like right in there you can kind of see I don't know if you can see very well but right in here they've done some damage to the toy but even with aggressive chewers they haven't been able to do a ton of damage and again that's why until you know how chewy your dog is going to be you want to monitor them but this is one of those toys that is fairly difficult for dogs there's ridges along the pickle and you can take treats stuff them in there really wedge them down in there and it can become very very difficult for your dog to get them all out this little guy is really good for puppies it's not good for adult dogs with aggressive chewers but this is a good beginner toy for puppies it's very simple you load the dried kibbles in there and they roll it around and the kibbles fall out it doesn't hold very much which is a good thing because i have to continually go and grab it refill it give it to the puppy again refill it give it to the puppy give it so it teaches the puppy to relinquish high value items and it teaches them in a very easy way how to learn to use a food toy Again, I don't use this for adults. I really only recommend this for puppies and very small adult dogs who aren't heavy, aggressive chewers. These are toys from Pet Project. They come in a cone, large and small. They come in a ball, large and small. I don't have the small ball. And they come in a bone. The bone is the hardest of each one of them. It has an opening here that you can put treats in and it does go all the way through to this side. I don't recommend putting gooey soft treats in this one, but hard crunchy treats for those dogs that really like to chew. This is a fairly good option. The ball is probably one of the, you can make this easy or you can make it difficult. To make it easy, I'm just gonna put, you know, some dry dog food in there. If I wanna make it more difficult, I'm gonna use treats that are a little bit harder, odd shaped. Um, again, make sure that there's some easy ones in there, but some harder, odd shaped treats. And this is where the, the crunchy cookies come into play. So I can use crunchy cookies to take up space so I'm not having to fill, pack this thing if I don't want to. What I like about this is that if I do want to pack the whole ball with an entire dinner, I can do that. Or I can use the dry treats to really just kind of take up space. Same thing with the uh, cone. I can use, I can stick a whole big biscuity cookie in there and it takes up a lot of space. Again, it determine. I decide if I want like a treat cone or a dinner cone. Even when I stuff these treats with their dry dog food for dinners, I want to add a few treats in there so, to keep, to spice it up for them. Um, because I am asking them to work for their food, so I do want the occasional yummy thing in there. It's kind of like trail mix for people. We eat the raisins and the peanuts to get to the M&Ms, and I want dogs to eat the kibbles to occasionally get to the yummy treat that might be in there. This is a forage feeder from Kaijin. Comes in a couple of different styles. It's got the, the blue one, a flower. This is called the Hills. They're all varying difficulties. What I like about this particular um, puzzle is that it's very simple. So if I have an adult dog, maybe a rescue, who lacks confidence, who hasn't had a lot of experience with food toys, is kind of a little shy and timid, this is the bowl that I normally start out with them. Um, some insecure puppies do very well with this. This is like the easiest of the easy. They don't have to move it, they just have to work through it. Um, so this is a good beginner toy. This is also a very good toy for households with small children in the home because kids want to help with your dog. Um, they want to help feed the dog. Well, guess what? This helps the kids um, feed the dog and it also teaches the dog to work for their food at the same time. It's very difficult to ask a five-year-old to stuff the topple toy but it's very easy to ask a five-year-old to pour the food from the bowl or from the bag into this bowl spread it out make it even and then allow them to give this to the dog the kids love it because it's fun they understand that it's a game for the dog and they feel like they've got to help the dog um, so it's a win-win the kids win the dog wins this is also really good for 
busy owners, if you're super busy and in the morning and you don't have time to stuff another toy, it literally takes two seconds to throw dry dog food in this and then your dog can go play with it for 10-15 minutes, depending on your dog. Very simple, very easy to use for everybody. I have every variety, so if I'm getting swamped, I'll throw all kibble in all the ball in all the in all of these. They each get a different one. And it's really kind of fun to see the dogs go to which toy they want best. Now that I've showed you some of the best toys out there for mental enrichment and food toys, I would encourage you to pick some up and add them to your day-to-day -day living with your dog. You will be so happy you did and your dog will thank you for it. You don't have to buy them all at once. Buy one now and then one next month and one the month after or every couple of weeks. Slowly build up your repertoire of toys that you have. Just like you don't buy all of your board games at once or all your video games at once for your kids, but you do eventually over time buy multiple toys. I encourage you to do the same thing for your dog. Variety is the spice of life for us and for them. So I encourage you to pick up toys and start to feed this way. You will be very happy that you did and your dog will be super happy that they did.